God. Hey, Jesus, you love me too much. Oh, too much. Oh, too much. Oh, excess love. Oh, Jesus, you love me too much. Oh, too much. Oh, too much. Oh, excess love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good evening, good evening, good evening. God bless you and welcome to Global Apostolic Movement's Virtual Church. Thank you so much for joining on tonight. I am Apostle LaShawn Reese, founder and chief apostle for Global Apostolic Movement, and I want to personally thank you for tuning in to our virtual church service. I also invite you to continue to join us every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as we go forth in praise and dynamic teaching of the word of God. Our vision is to spark a global movement for the 21st century saints that will stir up your giftings, causing the apostolic anointing to flow, which will result in greater works that are aligned with God's given purpose for your life. So please join me for a moment of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray that you will bless this service tonight and touch the hearts and the minds of your people that are watching now, even this broadcast. God calls an outpour of your anointing and the Holy Spirit to overtake them. And God, as we have gone into a new year, manifest your glory in the lives of your people like never before in the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Again, thank you so much for joining. Now get ready to enjoy praise and worship with pastors Elliot and Julia Stokes. God bless you all. Bless the Lord, can you hear us? Hallelujah. Amen. And praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We serve a mighty God who's excellent in power and wonder. He is a mighty God, and it is an honor to serve him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Our God, he reigns forever. He is our everlasting God. Do you believe it tonight? Yes, ma'am. That he is your everlasting God? Thank you. He do not faint and he won't grow weary. He is the defender of the weak. He comforts those in need, in need and he lifts us up. We shall be lifted tonight. You will be lifted on tonight. Hallelujah. Glory. Strip the back and we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strip the back and we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strip the back and we wait upon the Lord. 
Wow. 
Hallelujah. We can trust this God. Yes. We can depend on this God. Amen. He is reliable. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. We give him praise. Hallelujah. And glory. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Lord. you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. He's worthy. He's worthy. He is worthy. Mm. We're going to trust in the Lord. Mm. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Give glory to God in the highest, for he alone is worthy of all glory. He's a, he alone is worthy of the praise. We want to bless the Pastor Stokes for bringing that worship to us and uh, giving honor first to God. And just want to say thank you to Apostle Reese and making this all possible because of her determination to be obedient to the word of God. Amen. And moving forward and gain the global apostolic movement 
the virtual church. I am Pastor Beverly, and I just want to welcome each and every one of you. And we're going to go ahead and just jump into the word. I bless God for every song that went forth because they didn't know what God had given me. See, I'm on assignment today. Amen. And when they were singing, strength arise, that's in line with what God has given me. When it says the Lord is my light and my salvation, that's in line with what the word had, mm, what the Lord had given me. And it says, here I am to worship. See, there comes a point in your life when you just have to make up your mind that no matter what, God, I'm going to worship you because you alone are my salvation. No matter what it looks like, no matter what I feel like, no matter what I've been through, because I know that you alone are worthy. You alone. So I'm going to bow down. I'm going to humble myself under your mighty hand. I'm going to bow down and I'm going to surrender everything at your feet, Lord. Father, you alone are worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy of all praise. And so I just want to, again, just thank God. And I'm excited about what God is doing in this season. I want to say Happy New Year to each and every one of you. And so just want to open with a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for what you're doing tonight. Holy Spirit of the living God, have your way move like you want to move. Whatever you want to do, do it. Father, touch every heart and every mind. Father, that's joined in via Facebook or Zoom. And Father, we say, let your will be done. Allow your kingdom to come, oh God. Oh God, and we just thank you, Lord. Remove every distraction, every hindrance, God. And I pray right now, Father, that you will touch my lips with hot coals of fire. Father, anoint my ears to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. As I decrease, you increase the more. And Mm, spirit of the living God begin to move and touch each person and each household that your will may be done and your kingdom come as it mm, as it is in heaven in Jesus name I'm on assignment uh, for the full month again we're going to be doing this every Sunday at 7 p.m the Lord had given me for the month of January it's called resurgence of hope and I thought about it and I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm not sure what resurgence means. When I looked up the word to res uh, resurgence, it talked about how when you break it up in re, you look at re, it means to do again, to do anew. In other words, to revive. Some of us have become so despondent. We have been pulled back because we have been suffering through so many things. And so the Lord says, I want you to come and I want you to reignite if you will. You can call me a fire starter tonight. It doesn't matter what you call because the spirit of the Lord is going to rekindle some things in you. Some things have died over the last few years. We pulled back. We become a little bit hesitant. We didn't know which way it was going. We hear more negativity than we do positive, positivity. And so today, my assignment is to spark you. Amen. And I'm going to come out of Proverbs 13 and 12. I'm going to read this passage of scripture first out of the New King James Version, then I'm going to read it out of the NIV, then I'm going to read it out of the message, amen? And we're going to tie it all up together with what the Lord is doing in this season. Proverbs 13 and 12, hope deferred, make the heart sick, but when the desire comes, it is a treat of life. The NIV said that hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled fulfillment is a tree of life, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. The message Bible says, unrelenting disappointment leaves you heartsick, but a sudden good break. And I'm here to tell you tonight, there's a good break that's coming. <laughs> a sudden good break can turn life around. And so I just came to talk about hope deferred. When we look at the word hope, hope means that it is an expectation of trust and confidence. It comes from the root word ELPO, E-L-P-O, which means to anticipate with pleasure and to welcome. It also, ELPIS is spelled E-L-P-I-S, is an, un, is an expectation with a guarantee. In other words, when our hope is deferred, that thing that we've been longing for, that thing that we have put our confidence in, when it seems to be waning in the balance, when I looked up the word deferred, it means to be postponed, to be delayed, to be suspended or withheld for a period of time or for a certain time or event. And you're saying, what am I saying? I'm saying that in this season, 
these past few years, we have been experiencing disappointment after disappointment. We have been experiencing chaos. We have been experiencing so many different things. We know COVID, we've dealt with loss of loved ones. We've dealt with loss of jobs. We've dealt with not being able to get out and communicate with loved ones. There has been a Mm, so many different things that have happened within these last few years. We're dealing with racial prejudice. We're dealing with, how do I want to say, climate change, because there are some things, I don't know about you, but I've been watching the weather. We're having some different things that are occurring. I hear the word of God saying that the earth is moaning and groaning with birth pains, waiting for the sons of God to arise. This is our season, people of God, to arise, but we can't arise. We can't take over. We can't stand and begin to decree and declare the word of God if our heart is sick. When I'm talking about a sick heart, I'm talking about that person that may be disappointed. I'm talking about how the heart that is grieving, the heart that is mourning, the heart that is sorrowful, the heart that is broken, the heart that is heavy. Mm. And it's heavy without hope. It's heavy maybe even with a little hope. When I looked up the word and I was studying and I'm like, okay, Lord, deferred, it also means a disuse. We have become so despondent. We have become so complacent because every time you turn around, it's something new. Every time you turn around, there's a different calamity. Every time you turn around, it seems like someone's dying that you know. It seems like someone has COVID. Every time you turn around, one job is closing down. We're just hearing bad news after bad news. Our children are turning to cutting. Our mm, veterans are dealing with PTSD. We're having those that have been dealing with different issues, uh, sexual abuse, uh, maybe domestic violence. They're numbing their pain with drugs, with alcohol, uh, you name it, maybe shopping, whatever it is. Uh, every time we turn around, uh, it seems like the enemy is coming in. Uh, it seems like he's raising, mm, he's coming in like a flood. Uh, I don't know about you, but this has not been my best year, regardless of what I said at the beginning of 2021. See, I was going into it with the hope, but see, my 2020 didn't end right. My 2020, can I be honest with you, people of God? My end, starting in December the 23rd, I cried up until January 2021. So it didn't leave the way I thought it was going to end. See, I came expecting that I'm going to finish strong. I did because I didn't die. I finished strong, but not in the way I thought I was going to finish strong. See, even at the beginning of the year, I lost my husband. See, I can understand and I can mm, relate to the mourning and to the sorrow. See, we planned a future together. Then all of a sudden, my life shifted. All of a sudden, some things came up that I wasn't expecting. See, the enemy thought he had me, but thank God that I know a God who majors in possibilities. I thank God that he kept me when I thought I didn't want to get up. See, I'm talking about a hope deferred. I'm talking about when you want to get under the covers and you just want to bury yourself. I'm talking about when you don't even have the strength to pray, although you believe. See, when hope is deferred, it brings up three things. It makes you question or brings to surface your doubt and unbelief. When hope is deferred, it's gonna cause you, may cause you to walk away from God. When hope is deferred, it makes you, hallelujah, just wanna quit, throw in the towel. The disciples begin to wash their nets. See, I see in the spirit of God, some of you are beginning to wash your nets. Some of you are still under the covers. As a matter of fact, some of you have drawn the curtains because see, when hope deferred, depression wants to set in. Some in the body of Christ, can't pray for anybody else's strength because you don't have any strength. So you've been contemplating suicide. So right now, I speak against that spirit of death and I loose it from its assignment. That spirit of death that's trying to blind your destiny, that's trying to stop your marriage, that's trying to stop your health, that's trying to break up your families. We curse it right now in the name of Jesus. See, I'm still talking about a hope deferred, but the Lord told me to come. Mm, and sparked your hope again. He gave me an acronym for hope. Hope means to hear. And we take that from Romans 10 and 17. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, we've heard so much negativity within the last few years that has become our hope is buried. Have you ever seen coals in a fireplace or maybe your uh, what a, a barbecue grill 
and the coals and you just see just the white ambers. See, for cooking, that's a good thing. But when it comes to your spiritual uplifting, when it comes to hope, that's not a good thing. So the Lord told me to take my stoke, which is the Holy Ghost, and begin to poke at it until it begins to spark up again, to begin to poke at it. Because see, faith cometh by hearing. The Lord says some of you need to turn off some things because you've been hearing too many negative things. And I'm going to come against something else. The Spirit of the Lord dropped in my, mm, the Spirit dropped uh, mm, this word in my heart uh, and he said quit telling them that death comes in threes. I cancel that right now in the name of Jesus. Because see, you have to understand when hope is deferred, when the things have been delayed, when they've changed, when all manner of foolishness or when the enemy comes in, he's going to cause you to begin to speak some things out of your mouth. You have to understand that the words you speak, the sentences that come out your mouth, you're framing your world. You're giving the enemy access. But when hope comes, it is a tree of life. When that desire, when that longing is fulfilled, then life is going to come. And I came to stoke you. Hope, acronym, H is for here. Romans 10, 17. Oh, it's for obey. We know in Isaiah, when it talks about if you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. But the Lord told me to tell you, and when it was talking to Mary and the disciples were told by Jesus just to bring it to me, and Mary, his mother said, whatever he tells you to do, you do it. John 2, 5, B. And I'm saying that because see, in this season, there are gonna be some things God is gonna tell you don't sound like the norm. See, I'm here to decree and declare, this is no longer church as usual. I don't know what you're used to. I don't know because see, in this season, through this apostolic movement, amen, God is saying that I'm breaking some stuff up. I'm gonna rekindle some fire. I'm gonna cause you to walk in your kingdom authority. You are a son of the most high God. You are a daughter of the most high God. And he says that there's not one good thing Will he withhold from us who, who walk up rightly? See, I'm still talking about hope deferred. He said P is for pray. We're spelling out the acronym for hope, pray. Philippians 4, 16. He said that whenever we have a petition, he said to be anxious for nothing, but through prayer and with thanksgiving, make our request known unto God. See, you pray and then you thank him. Because he said that when we pray, we have to believe. And that brings me to E, -E and that's embrace. H here, Romans 10, 17, obey John 2, 5, pray Philippians 4, 16 and embrace, embrace. I was thinking expectation. He said, no, embrace because see, I need for you to lay hold of the word. I need for you to lay hold of the promise. I need for you to get that word so deep in you so that whatever comes out of your mouth is not going to be anything but word because the word of God says that what's in the man is going, what's going to come out Ah, the abundance of the heart. What's in your heart? If you have word in your heart, guess what? When the enemy prods you, you're going to speak word. Guess what? When the enemy begins to crush you or you got a bad diagnosis or you have a bad report, the word of God says, whose report are you going to believe? So I came to stoke that hope in you. I came to reignite that thing. So you're going to hear the word. You're going to obey the word. You're going to pray about the word. And then you're going to embrace it because you know, he said that the promise of God are yea and amen. See, when hope is Mm, rekindle. It says that it is a tree of life when that longing is fulfilled. Fulfilled means to satisfy, to be content, to be at peace. When that is fulfilled, then you're going to become a tree so that your family is going to sit up under it. Some may rest in it. Some may have to come up under you because now you've been restricted. Now you've been rekindled. Now you've been mm, reignited. You have been resurged. And in, in other words, it means a bringing back to life. You've been resurged mm, because some of you have been doing it. I know you've been going to church. I know you've been hearing the word. I know you've been standing. I know you've been prophesying. I know you've been believing. See, I'm not going to measure your faith. That's not my job. It's just to say that hope has to be rekindled because in this new season, God saying that, what's over the horizon? I may not take away anything, but I still need for you to stand. I still need for you to declare the word because I have not changed my mind regarding your purpose or your assignment. I made you a promise and I'm not a man that I should lie or the son of man that I should repent. The second mm, 
scripture that I want to read into your hearing. And this is where we talk about that turnaround. We're talking about that breaking that's going to come forth. The spirit of the Lord gave me, he said, I will return to her vineyards to her and transform the valley of Achor into a gateway of hope. Some says a door of hope. She will give herself to me as she did long ago when she was young, when I freed her from her captivity in Egypt. We all know Egypt means bondage, but I want to go back to that Valley of Achor. You have to understand that the Valley of Achor, Achor translates affliction, calamity, trouble, or a place where you have become so despondent. But the Lord says that I'm making that place, that place of trouble, that place of calamity, that place of depression, that place of mm, where the enemy is causing you or making you want to just throw in the towel, that place right there. The Lord says that I'm opening up a door right now for you. I'm turning that, that calamity into a blessing. I'm turning that morning into joy. I'm going to give you beautiful ashes and the whole of joyful morning. See, I'm turning it around and you just can't. This is something that you have to lay hold of because see, only God can do it. I'm just the messenger. But God says this day, if you can trust him, he says some of you need to literally get up and step out of trouble into freedom, to step out of trouble into hope, to step out of calamity into freedom. He said, I need for you to come back to me. That's what we're talking about when we hear. See, in order to hear, you're going to have to get a closer relationship with him. He says, I need for you to turn back to me. Turn back to me. And I'm going to turn. I'm going to turn that place of trouble. I'm going to turn that broken marriage. I'm going to turn that sickness, that infirmity around because I'm opening up a doorway for you to come in. Some of you may not be able to walk, but the Lord said, just raise your hand. Some of you may not even be able to do that. The Lord said, just shout hallelujah. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out of where I was and I'm going into where he's calling me to go into. He has not changed his mind. He said, there I'm going to bring restoration. That's what it means by the vineyards. Everything that you're he said, I'm going to give you double for your trouble. Everything that you lost. See, there are some people that have fallen away. God said, let them go. I remember being in the kitchen one day and I was looking out my window and I saw the trees behind my house just swaying back and forth. And I remember there's a passage in Isaiah when it talks about uh, the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Now, people of God, I was getting excited because see, you don't know where I've been through. You don't know what I was going through, but I was standing there in my kitchen. I had running water. I had lights on. I had food to eat. So I'm washing the dishes, mm. but I still had some issues. I'm talking about a hope deferred. I still had some issues. Then all of a sudden, I saw this leaf fall from the tree. And the spirit of the Lord spoke to me. He said, when it falls, let it go. Don't pick it up. And I'm like, let it go. He said, yes. Because see, we keep hearing about a shift. He said, now, in order for there to be a shifting, there has to be a sifting. So the things that I'm calling to fall away, they have to go. He said, when, when have you ever looked out and saw a tree pick up a leaf that fell from it? He said, there is a purpose. He said, it may look dead. It may look dormant, but in due season, I'm still talking about a hope deferred. I'm here to stoke the hope because it says that when that longing comes, when that desire comes, then all of a sudden that thing that looked dead is going to have life. But remember death and life are in the power of the tongue. What are you saying? But once you get the word in your mouth, once you get the word in your heart, once you begin to stand up and tell the enemy enough is enough. See, you've been having other people talk to your enemy, talk to your issues. Talk to your situation. The spirit of the Lord says, I put my words in your mouth. You tell it to move. You tell it to behave. You speak to the storm. You speak to your situation. You speak to your circumstance. And because you're with me and I am in you, it's got to move in the name of Jesus. It's got to back up. It's got to bow down. See, the evil bows before the good. And because the good one is in us, I'm not talking about me. I'm not talking about you, but I'm talking about the good news of the gospel. 
on. I'm talking about the one who died on the cross, the one they were singing about. I don't know what the cost was because see, mm, but I thank him he paid it all. You need to tell your enemy it's already been paid. You need to tell the devil to back up. It's already been covered. The Lord says some of you are dealing with regret. Some of you are dealing with mm, resentment and unforgiveness. The Lord says now I can't move in your situation until you let them go. See, you've got to let them go. See, for us in the body of Christ, forgiveness is not an option. You have to choose to do it. And I know the enemy is going to keep speaking, but the more he talks, the more you ought to talk. The more you ought to praise. Remember, we prayed about it. So thank God it's already done. Remember, you gave him your supplication and your petition. Now we've embraced the word because he don't know how to lie. He's going to move it. I'm talking about a God that spoke into darkness and something came forth. I'm talking about a God that died in Calvary's cross. They put him in a tomb. Three days later, he rose again. I'm talking about a God who brings water from a rock. I'm talking about a God who is the resurrection and the life. I'm talking about that same God that no matter what you go through, when you begin to speak life, when your hope comes back, when that longing comes, you still have to remember that no matter what, if the psalmist says, I'm going to wait on him. The Lord says that if you wait, he will strengthen you. He will strengthen you. He's not going to make you ashamed. See, we have been told for so long that because you had to wait, because you didn't see the miracle, because you haven't seen this happen, then evidently you don't have enough faith. See, don't judge my faith. My faith got me up out of bed. My faith allowed my eyes to open. My faith kept me from walking out. My faith kept me from slicing my wrist. My faith kept me from going to jail. See, my faith. Mm, he gave to me a measure. I don't know what it's going to take you take you out, but you don't know what it takes to mm, break me or make me. But I say, God, that because I waited on him, who he said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I'm talking about hope. He renewed their strength. They're going to mount up on weeds of eagles. They're going to run and not get weary. They're going to walk and not faint. But you have to get the word in you. Mm. And what I'm telling you, it's good for me. I'm not talking about something you heard. I'm talking about when the word gets in you. Jeremiah said, I found your words and I ate them. And they were to me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Once you begin to eat the word, Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. Once you begin to eat the word, then all of a sudden you're going to feel something change. When you begin to call on his name, if you need a healing, call on Jehovah Ropa. If you need a breakthrough and you need provision, call on Jehovah Jireh. If you need help, call on El. Mm. Jehovah Ezar, when you need a shield or a buckler or a safeguard, call on Jehovah Mekin. He is your shield. He is his attributes, people of God. And so I just came to tell you, the Lord said that this day you got to walk out. He said, and when you come out, you're going to remember mm, what I did for you when you were in captivity once before. See, this is not your first rodeo. It may be a little bit different. It may be a little bit tougher because it didn't come like you expected it. But God said, I brought you out then and I'm going to bring you out now, whatever your bondage is. But because of everything that's been ex we're experiencing in the world, our faith, our hope has been a little cloudy. And we just pull back. But in this season, the Lord said, rise up, rise up, get up. Begin to speak my word, begin to stand on my word. So I came to tell you, whatever your trouble is, if you just look up, you're going to see a door. If you just look up, you're going to see a portal. If you just look up, if you just get up, if you would just stand, you, some of you may not even need to walk. You just maybe just need to stand up as a declaration and a sign to the enemy. You know what? I'm not staying here anymore. I'm coming out. I will not die here. This is not your place of destiny. I will not die here. I'm going to get up and I'm going to move forward into every promise. And as I move forward, blessings are going to overtake me. Every time I look to the right, when I look to the left, when I look in front of me, there's a blessing. Mm. And you have to understand, people of God, your blessing may not just be monetary. You might need peace and don't even know it. Mm. You might just need a word and don't even know it. Your blessings are going to overtake you. God is our strength and he is our light. And I came to tell somebody else today, your pain is not permanent. Mm. 
Let me say that again, because some of you, uh, I hear your Holy Ghost. He said, some of you need to breathe. Mm. I hear the Lord saying that there was someone, or there are maybe more than one or two, whether on Facebook or on the Zoom call. He said, you haven't really been breathing. You've been holding your breath. Ah, but he said, just breathe. Some of you just need to inhale and then exhale. As you inhale, you're breathing in the spirit of the Lord. As you're exhaling, you're blowing everything else out. Death, you're not going to die here. I came to prophesy to you today. You're not dying in this place. Whatever your trouble was, I'm speaking past tense because I believe you walked out. Whatever your trouble was, I'm speaking in past tense because he said that door of trouble is now a door of hope but it's up to you to lay hold of it. I can't make you do it. Nobody on this call, on Zoom, Facebook, no one, but it's up to you to lay hold of the word. It's the words that's gonna change you. It's the words that's gonna transform you. It's the words that's gonna keep you. Remember that he is his word. <laughs> mm. He and the word are one. So when you're crying out to him, lay hold of him. And just breathe, exhale, inhale, exhale. Somebody needs to shout right now because you've been mm, at the place of death. God said, get up. I speak to you. Whew. There are some things that you've been waiting on. You've been a little bit disappointed because the same people you've helped, they've turned their back on you. God said, let it go because I am your provider. El Roi, the God who sees you in your misery, say, I'm here. Let them go. Let them go. I need you to come to me and I need for you to wait. And I'm going to give back to you. See, they thought they counted you out. See, they knew about the marriage. They knew about the affair. They knew about your children. They knew about your sickness. They knew about your situation. And half of them couldn't understand why you are yet praising God. He hadn't moved on your behalf. He said, let them keep watching. Now that you're walking, let them keep watching because I'm going to do something so that is literally not only going to blow their mind, but it's going to blow yours. He says, mm, he's going to bring back to you everything that the locusts and the canker worm stole. He's going to return it all back to you plus interest. See, he's going to give you retribution for everything that you've been through. He said, it ain't over. It's only over if you quit. It's only over if you don't get up. It's only over if you faint. It's only over if you throw in the towel. It's only over if you keep washing your nets. Even when Jesus showed up, he told the disciples, he saw them. God ain't mad that you're washing your net. God is not mad that you're tired. He already know, but he says, rise up. I'm giving you strength today. Get up. I've got someone who's stuck in the fire. Now you're going to understand that I haven't forgotten you. Nor have I changed my mind. If you can just hold on just a little while longer. Mm. He called it a light affliction. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It may seem like to him and everybody else, but it's in the light affliction. David said, it was good that I was afflicted because now I know your statue. In other words, I was able to come to you. In other words, nobody else could help me. See, when my enemies turned their back on me, some of you dealing with church hurt, God said, this ain't the same as that. Get up, move forward. I have need of you. And I still love you. I'm not disappointed, nor have I changed my mind. I haven't given up on you. But he also says, don't give up on me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this word that went forth. Now seal it in the hearts of your people. Father, we praise you. We honor you when we bless you. Father, I come against every fetter, every chain, every shackle, Father, that's been binding your people right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now, Father, that you're giving them a vision of a, the door of hope as they walk in out of calamity, whatever that situation, whatever that circumstance, Father, that they will no longer be focused on the world. Jesus, your word says, you said, that in the world, we will have trials and tribulations, but in you, we will have peace. You told us to rejoice because you've already overcome the world. So Father, I declare and decree that we're overcomers, overcomers full of hope, and we're moving forward, God, because we're standing on your word. And Father, what you've set in motion, can't no man or demon in hell reverse. So Father, I thank you for that mother. No more tears, tears would she cry. 
Father, I thank you right now for the pastor that's been carrying all of these burdens. Father, and you told him to lay it down and you told her to lay him down in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now, God, that they're changing uh, their garments. Mm. They're changing their garments right now, God. But every heaviness, God, mm. as you told them, Father, to pull off the grave clothes off of Lazarus, God, I decree and declare that in the spirit realm, grave clothes are being stripped right now in the name of Jesus. They will no longer carry the past. But the very thing that carried them, they will now carry it in just to give it to you. You said, cast our cares upon you because you care for us. So, Father, I cover each and every person in the blood. We thank you. We honor you. And we praise you, Lord. We shout. We're coming out. We shout, God, that you're still glorious. We shout, God, that you're more than able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask or think. In Jesus' name, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Amen. We're coming from our very own Pastor Beverly tonight. Hallelujah. Hope deferred. Coming from Proverbs 13, verse 23. Hallelujah. Our hearing, obey, pray, and embrace. Hallelujah. Glory. We thank you for that word tonight. Father God, and we thank you, Lord, that you cover Pastor Beverly from the crown of her head down to the soles of her feet, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And touch every heart, God, of the people, God, that are on this call tonight, Father God, that are on Facebook, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Cover them, God, in your blood. God, cover them now. Let the word, God, penetrate their heart, God. Let their hearing, God. I can not over see be in heightened tonight, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Let them be able to obey your word, God, in the name of Jesus. Everything that you tell them to do, God, every step that you have ordered for them, God, let them be able to walk in your ways, God, to walk in your will, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Let them pray, God. I can not over see and seek your face, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Let them embrace, God, everything thing, God. How you know that we'll see that you have for them in this season, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God, and we honor you, Jesus. How you know that we'll see for what you would do. How you know that we'll see in the hope of your people, God. How you know that we'll see in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. If the word touched your heart, how you know that we'll see. If your hope has been delayed, how you know that we'll see. And you don't know where to turn. How you know that we'll see? I thought I would have had it by now. I've been hoping. I've been dreaming. I've been dreaming. And I've been hoping. But nothing's happening. My hope has been deferred. If that's you tonight, if your hope's been deferred and you have nowhere else to turn, how you know that we'll see? Try God. Try Jesus. He can uh, uh, enheighten your hope. How you know that see? He can make things happen. He can make the impossible possible for you. If that's you tonight, even if you left God, you say I it never got answered for me, God. I'm tired of hoping. I lost my dreams. If that's you tonight and you walked away from God, you can come back. It don't take all that. It don't take much. All you got to do is open your mouth. Confess to him that you are Lord. I tried it my way now, God. I'll try it your way, Jesus. If that's you tonight, how you know that we'll see you want Jesus to be your Lord. How you know that we'll see if you want Jesus to come back in and give you hope again. Give you reason to get up in the morning. Give you reason how you know that we'll see you know that we'll see you to carry on if that's you tonight how you know that we'll see you just repeat after me lord i believe you sent your only begotten son to die for my sins i accept you as my personal lord and savior today 
And thank you, Lord, for saving me. And thank you, Lord, for dying for all of my unrighteousness. If you have said this prayer, you are now saved. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Every angel is rejoicing just over you, just you, you, yeah, you, over you, just because you decided to, to give God. How you know they'll see another chance. How you know they'll see to bring your hope back. See, now find a ministry like GAM, see global apostolic movement, virtual church. We're here every Sunday at 7 p.m. Join in. We have an email that you can email us if that's you and you want to be a part. You can do so at GAM, G-A movement. 21 at gmail.com. Again, that's G A movement 21 at gmail.com. Hallelujah. And God, we are celebrating every one of you that want to join in with us. Also, we have ways Amen. to give. If you look on the screen, we have ways that we can. Also, you know, if we, we are here for you also on Wednesday night with our inspirational moments with our very own chief apostle, LaShawn Reese. Wednesday nights at seven, we are here for you. So come join in with us. We will be glad to have you. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us. And we now turn it over to Elder Small. Thank you. Praise God for the word. Praise God. I'm here to give you the benediction. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Praise be to God. Amen. Thank you all for joining and being a part of our first virtual church. Please come back and by all means, join us. Amen. So we bless God for each and every one of you. And from game, we would like to say, be blessed, go forth and walk in victory. The door is open. You all be blessed. You're now released. God bless you all. Thank you. God bless you. Situations change.